Hey everybody. Today we're doing some two sample t testing in R using the t.test command. We're going to run through three different examples with three slightly different sets of assumptions, but in each case, the syntax in the t.test function is going to be pretty similar. I've already pulled up the help file, question mark t.test, and loaded in some essential packages. Tidyverse, of course. Um, read Excel, because one of our examples is going to use some data drawn directly from my laptop, and GLM's data. So that package, GLM's data, um, is, supports the Generalized Linear Models textbook by Dunn and Smith, which I recommend. And that's where our first example is going to come from. We're using the blocks data in that package. Here we're seeing 100 observations from a block stacking experiment, where children were asked to stack two different sorts of blocks, cubicle and cylindrical. And among other variables, the number of each kind of blocks that they stacked is recorded here in the second column. And we're going to be interested in the question of whether the student, whether these children tended to stack more of the cubicle blocks than the cylindrical ones. So good practice in any sort of data analysis is to start by plotting your data. So let's start just by getting a box plot here. Let's do a uh, ggplot. We're going to be using the blocks data frame. And on the x-axis, we'll put shape. On the y-axis, we'll put number. And as I said, let's get a box plot. So it's geome underscore box plot. OK, so visually speaking, it does look like there's a difference between the, the number of blocks that the children tend to stack of each of the, diff each of the two different kinds. Let's go ahead and do a t-test on this. The fundamental syntax is t.test. And within the t.test command, we're going to use um, model notation. So we'd like to know whether number is related or explained by shape within the blocks data set. And for the most simple t-test, um, this is all we really need. So let's go ahead and see the output. R is going, by default, to give us a Welch two sample t-test. It's going to give us um, p-values and other information for a hypothesis test with a default null hypothesis that the difference in the means is equal to zero for a two-sided alternative. It's also going to give us a 95% confidence interval by default. We can mess with all of that, but before I start messing with those parameters, let's review exactly what the Welch 2 sample t-test is. So as we would hope, this is used to test for the equality of means in two different populations, two different groups. The assumptions are fairly broad. It doesn't assume anything about the sample sizes or um, the variances of the groups. In particular, it's OK if the spread of the data is different within each group. And that's good because that's what we saw in our box plot here. It does assume that you have independent observations drawn from normally distributed populations, but that latter assumption of normality is um, is okay to it, it's okay if that is violated as long as your sample sizes are reasonable. This is a more general two sample t test than the other ones that we'll see later in this vid. Um, in particular, it's more general than the pooled t test. But as a result of that generality, it's going to be slightly more conservative in its results. Okay, so in this case, we might want to change the null hypothesis. In particular, in this case, we are probably interested in whether the um, children tended to stack more of the cubicle blocks than the cylindrical ones. So we want an alternative equal to greater. OK, and so you can see here the change. Now it's testing the one-sided alternative. You could also use a less alternative. We might also be interested in a null hypothesis with a different value than zero. That's somewhat rare, but is um, sometimes the case. For instance, we might be interested in testing the alternative hypothesis that on average the children tend to stack um, at least two more of the cubicle blocks than the cylindrical ones. So I'm adding the argument mu equals two here. And you can see the change in the output over there. Great, let's move on to a second example. This one is going to be built using some simulated data. Here's the code used to generate it. I'm uh, gonna just type through, just enter through this, not say too much about it, but the code is there if you wanna go through it a little more carefully. What I've done is to build a data frame where I have two groups, A and B, very creative names, 
and some simulated values for their reaction times in some experiment. Let's get a graph, let's get a plot just like we did before to see um, how this data looks. So again, ggplot, this time the data frame is reactions. And uh, much like before on the x-axis, let's put group. On the y-axis, we'll put time. And again, we'll do a box plot. Okay, so it looks like group B is responding slightly faster. Um, in this case, based on the plot, it looks like the spread for the two different groups, the spread of the data in each of the two different groups, is about the same. And there might be theoretical reasons or practical reasons why we would be able to make the assumption of equal variances between the groups. So let's go ahead and do that here as we do our t-test. I'm going to use to start the same syntax I did um, before. I'd like to know whether time is explained by group within the reactions data set. And now I'm going to add the argument of equal variances. And so it is var dot equal equals true. Okay. So the output looks very similar. Notice it just says two sample t-test, not Welch's two sample t-test. So um, let's take a look at the assumptions here. This is known as a pooled two sample t-test. And again, as you'd want, it's used to test the equality of population means between two different groups. It still does not assume that you have equal sample sizes, but it does assume equal variances between the groups. That additional assumption is going to allow us to get slightly tighter confidence intervals and a slightly um, lower threshold for statistical significance. The other assumptions remain the same. We are still assuming that we have independent observations drawn from normally distributed populations, but if the assumption of normality is violated, it's probably not a problem if the sample size is reasonable. This is really the default um, two sample t test for older stats textbooks and older statisticians because it's something that is more reasonable to calculate by hand or with a handheld calculator. It, uh, in this day and age, it is not as relevant as it used to be. And you really should only use it if you have specific justification for the assumption of equal variances in the groups. Just for contrast, let's see what this confidence interval looks like if we remove the var dot equal argument. So um, here's the Welch two sample t test. Up here, of course, is the um, pooled t test. Just look at the confidence um, intervals. So for the pooled confidence interval, the lower limit is negative 0.17377, etc. For the Welch, it is negative 0.1759. So the Welch two sample t-test is giving us a slightly wider confidence interval in this case. While we're at it here, I want to show one alternative syntax because notice that as I was coding this data frame, I um, also just wrote in the values, two vectors of values for the times taken. Sometimes you'll have that where instead of having a data frame with a group variable, you'll just have two different vectors of the values that you'd like to compare. And t.test is okay with that. So let's do time underscore a and time underscore b. And again, let's go ahead and have a um, var dot equal equals true. And it'll give us the, exactly the same output that it did um, in that first example. The first example that I did for this, the first part that I did for this example. Okay, one final sort of t-test I want to cover here is the paired two-sample t-test. And in this case, I am going to be using some data taken from Triola's introductory statistics textbook. I'm going to go ahead and load that in. And I'm going to modify that data set a little bit. Let's take a look at the, uh, the data frame that I'm actually going to be working with. It's called temps, and in this case, what we're seeing is 214 observations. Individuals had their temperature taken orally in the morning and afternoon. And we'd be interest, we're interested here in the question of whether there's a difference in the temperatures um, in these individuals. Now, this technically really only has one variable of interest, the difference between the temperatures. 
because each row in this data frame corresponds to one individual who had their temperature taken twice during the day. So we could just subtract morning minus afternoon and run a one sample t-test on that. We don't need to in this case. R does have some syntax built in. It's going to be t.test and um, hmm, let's just give it the vectors that we're interested in. So how about temps dollar morning comma temps dollar afternoon and the additional argument we want here is paired equals true. And there's the output. Let's take a look at, uh, I have a slide about the assumptions here as well, so let's take a look at that before we really talk about that output. For a paired t-test, we're assuming that our observations are paired. For instance, where we have subjects that are observed before and after some treatment. So in essence, we really only have one variable. This test is used to test whether the average difference between the paired observations could possibly be zero. So obviously it's assuming equal sample sizes. It's as usual, assuming independent observations drawn from a normally distributed population um, and is going to be robust against violations of normality when the sample size is large. Okay, so um, the output here is going to be slightly different in that it is going to give us the sample mean for the difference between the two groups that you can see there. Um, the degrees of freedom is going to be the number of pairs Notice here the degrees of freedom was five, but in the temps data frame, we have 214 observations. And the reason for that is that we have a bunch of NAs. And so the behavior here is that whenever R finds an NA in one of the two columns, it's going to disregard the pair entirely. So really this is only doing complete cases. Um, okay, so that gives you some background on the three essential t uses of t.test in R.